today I'm going to show you how to use Desmos Activity Builder. So this is a little bit different than our basic desmos.com graphing calculator. So this is a way for teachers to build activities for their students to use. Now Activity Builder can be a little bit complicated um, and there's sometimes a lot of code that is involved, but I'm going to kind of keep it simple so you can put basic questions that you might have in your you know, regular math homework and so on um, in this activity. Okay, so first you're going to go to teacher.desmos.com backslash activity builder. So it's right here, teacher.desmos.com backslash activity builder. And um, you are going to click on start building an activity. You can also Google activity builder Desmos and it will come up. All right, so as you start building your activity, you have to give it a name. And so for instance, maybe I want to start with making a card sort. So then I would go to, I would maybe say like quadratic equations, card sort activity. And I would hit start building. So if I want to create a card sort, I have all of these options here. I have graph, table, sketch, media, note, and so on. And I would go to more and I would hit card sort. Okay, and so this is kind of like the memory game that you played when you were a kid. And so you can create maybe a graph and have its description and students have to match those two cards together. But Desmos is nice because it's not just two cards. Maybe you have several different things that you want students to match together. Maybe a vertex, an axis of symmetry, x-intercepts, um, a y-intercept, standard form, <laughs> um, vertex form. There's lots of different things that you'd have them. Um, so with this, I'm going to go to graph and it creates a graph card. And when I click it, I can put whatever I want to put. So if I do like x squared plus 4, then I can hit done and that's now a card that students can select. So maybe I want some other things to describe this card. So I would go to math and I could say something like the y-intercept is 0, 4. And so I have that for my students and they could match those together in the activity. I can also enter other things. Like I could enter something like this um, graph has no real zeros, something like that. And then I can create some other graphs, like maybe I have y equals negative 2 times x plus 1 squared minus, let me put it on the screen, minus 2, something like that, where I have um, a vertex at negative 1 comma negative 2, an axis of symmetry of negative 1, and so on. So then under my math, I could say the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. And I might have something like, well, notice how I have this graph has no real zeros. I already had that. Um, so maybe I could say, and um, its axis of symmetry is at x equals zero, because if I say something with it has no real zeros, I only want it to match to one card. So you might have to adjust your cards as you go, because this one also has no real zeros. So then I could say um, something like the vertex is at negative one, negative two. Okay, and so I have three cards for each one, and so I would add instructions for my students. I might say something like match three cards um, that describe the same function. And then you have to create an answer key. So my pro tip for this is that you should write some notes about the ones that you um, created as you went. Because right now everything's in order, but unfortunately when I go to answer key, everything's scattered. And this is kind of exactly how students will see it um, with their, well, usually they're scattered. I guess these are still kind of um, lined up. But if you have a whole bunch of cards, like 15 cards, they're going to be kind of scattered. So luckily I can see that these are right there. And so I create this key for students. So when they go into their screen, they're going to see it more like this. Okay, and they have to match those cards together um, and so on. So my recommendation is that you have about 12 to 15 cards, any more than that, like if you had 25 cards, not only is it overwhelming for students, but it's also very cluttered on the screen. So sometimes you accidentally link um, things that shouldn't be linked. So if I put this here and I was like, oh no, those ones matched up and I didn't mean that, they can still separate them. Um, no big deal. But when you have like 25, 24 cards on one big screen, that happens more often. So you can always create another 
um, card sort on the next slide. So you're basically creating like a slide deck, much like in PowerPoint. So that's how we would do the card sort activity, but let's talk about other things in Activity Builder. So with Activity Builder, you wanna be able to add graphs, maybe a table of values, you could add a note, and so on. So we have lots of different options along here. We can also insert media. So for those of you that are doing e-learning lessons or online homework, um, you could insert maybe a short video of you doing the method, or you could insert maybe a video of a Ferris wheel and you could have them come up with the equation of the Ferris wheel. So there's lots of things that you can do there. Um, I will say if you insert a graph, students aren't able to interact with that graph if you have more than one thing on the screen. So if I put like an input and a note, and I said something like, match the black parabola to the red parabola. And I thought that I was giving them an activity where they had, you know, to work with their transformations. So I had like y equals x squared minus 2, and then I have a basic parent function. And I want this one to be a black parabola, so I would go to settings. I'd make that black, and then I think I had red for the other one, so we're good. And so I basically want them to make that um, where they can move it. Well, if I hit done, and then I go into preview, they don't get that screen off to the side that allows them to input functions. So there's no way for them to like move this parabola so it ends up being the same thing. But if you get rid of that um, note and input, now when you go into the preview, they have those options off to the side where they can adjust it. Suppose you want it so that you can't um, click on anything on the red one and that this code is hidden from students. Okay, so just like um, we did before with adding a note, you can add a note, a folder, a table, whatever you want here. So I added a note that says match the black parabola to the red parabola. So that way I don't have to have it off to the side and students can still interact with this graph. Okay, but when I have these two functions, when I go into preview, students can still see both of those and they can see the code written right here. And I don't want that. So what I do is I add a folder and I can click hide this folder from students. Now you can name the folder if you want, but students will not see that folder. Now anything that I drag underneath that folder, so watch as I pull this one up, you will see a um, vertical line created. So what that means is when you go into preview, Students don't see the um, y equals x squared anymore, okay? So that's not actually the one that I wanted in the folder, so I can pull that back down. Um, but I did want this red one in the folder. So when I go into the preview, now the red one's gone. And I want them to match it, but right now it's still clickable, which is fine. Sometimes you do want it to be clickable for students, but sometimes you just want it to kind of appear as an image so that they can't find random points. Like maybe you had an assignment where they had to then you know, sketch out a t-table or find values um, that you wanted, like fun with function notation, find a few values. So if you want this so that it's not clickable, then you input it as a system of, or not a system of equations, as a parametric equation. So the way that we do that is we write it parentheses t comma, and then we write it out just with t's. So t minus 2 squared plus 5 and notice, so I still have that red. Let me hide this one by clicking on it. It's only between t values of 0 and 1. So I want to make this so that even if my students zoom out several times, um, they still won't realize that this isn't an infinite parabola. So I have it like that. I can hit, hit my little cog here to make it a dotted line again. And it is red. Um, so I have my dotted line and now I can move it underneath that, um, the uh, folder. Okay, so I can delete the other one or I can leave it there, it's fine. Um, but now when we go to preview, I can't click on specific points here. So there is some value to doing that sometimes. All right, so let's say I had the next problem that said match the red cubic function to the green cubic function. So maybe you've been talking about zeros, finding zeros. And so students might realize that, you know, as they're in the preview, they can click on the green function and they can see those points. So that's what a case where maybe it's nice that they can click on points. And so they see they have zeros at negative three, negative one half, and one. Okay, so they might have a general idea that they need to adjust this to x minus one, 
get rid of my cubed here. X minus a negative one half, so plus one half. Oops, lost my X. And then X minus a negative three, so X plus three. And they see, oh, I almost have it. I can see that I go through these points but I need to be able to figure out how I'm scaling this. So maybe you adjust it, the note, and you say, hint, um, your leading coefficient is a fraction. Use a point to find it. So you could already have a point sketched out for them. So like this point right here is negative two comma 4.5. So if you were in that parametric mode, maybe you could draw that point in or you could write it as nine over two. And then you can label it and you can say point A and say, hey, this is the point you wanna use guys. And you can label it with the actual numbers like that. And they can use that to figure out what A is. Well, they could even use sliders. So if you remember sliders, you can slide things back and forth. So they can see that as they adjust this, they're kind of getting close. They can get a good prediction, or they can plug in values for x, right? They could plug in negative 2, and they could solve for a. Okay, so there's lots of ways to um, use Desmos to help you with these. All right, so let's say that you're trying to create an activity and you really want to work in your student interests. So I think this is super important for those of you that are um, doing e-learning days right now or online learning. You want to still be able to connect with your students. Okay, so you want to be able to um, put problems into your Desmos activities that are about what they're learning about or what they're interested in. Um, so I have a niece named Bridget and she is, she wants to be a veterinarian and she has many goats and chickens and a single donkey which is named Jenny which is my name so I don't know how I feel about that but apparently there's a type of donkey named Jenny. The type of donkey is Jenny. Um, and she walks around and she counts a total of 68 animals. So if I want to make this um, problem more engaging for my students, I can add images. Okay, so with that, I would go to media and I would choose a file so I could just Google goats and chickens, you know, whatever you want to do. So I already did that. And I'm going to choose this picture of a goat and a chicken and I add it into my problem. And then I want students to give an exam or I want them to um, give an answer to this. So then I put an input key and so they can enter things as a point or with text, so they could write out a sentence or just a point. Um, so when we go to preview, this is what it looks like for them. And they could fill that in. Same thing, maybe you have someone really interested in baseball. So my favorite baseball player is Chris Bryant. So I'm gonna go to media and I'm gonna choose a file and I have Chris Bryant batting. And so then this problem is about um, a batting average. Okay, so you're working in your student's interests you can use their names in the problem. You're really trying to engage them in the learning. Talk to you about is how to um, kind of engage with your students' work and see how they're doing in your activities. So I'm on my teacher page at teacher.desmos.com and I have some collections and I'm inside of one of my collections. So when you create a collection, you can you know, create a collection for all of your Algebra 1 classes, your Geometry classes, your Algebra 2 and so on. So you can kind of organize your work. Um, so mine is with some webinars that I've been doing, so some SAT webinars, and I have the um, activity three parabola equations, which is something I started out with that was made by Desmos, and I've edited it to um, more align with what I was trying to teach my students. And so I had a few teachers play around with that this morning, and so if I go to my view dashboard, I can see exactly how they were doing. So if I hit view dashboard, I can make it anonymous by clicking this button that says anonymize. <laughs> so sorry, <laughs> might have your names in there. Um, so I have Alan Turing and Vi Hart and so on. And so I can see how they were doing with these um, problems. So if they have check marks, that means that they got it correct. Maybe they have some descriptions. And so I can see where it says explain my thinking. So it says who's correct and why. And so I have um, someone that said x, is e x minus 3 equals 0. When x equals 3, the graph shifts right three units from the origin. And maybe I check the other students. I can click down and check other students. The x-intercept is at 3, 0. Um, it shifted three spaces to the right. And so there's lots of different answers that they have. And so maybe I want to show um, that these answers are maybe connected. 
And so I can click this little button, I call it the snipping tool, but it's really the snapshots tool. And so if you click on it, it will now go up here on your dashboard, so under snapshots. And so then I can go to other questions and I'm like, ooh, you know, this person got that one right. Did How did the other people do? Oh yeah, they're definitely getting this parabola right. But maybe there's someone that um, didn't have the correct answer. Maybe they had negative x squared plus seven. And we were like, ooh, that's not quite right. You can still snap it um, and you can discuss that, but it's totally anonymous. So you can say, you know, this person was really close, but how can we adjust um, their vertex so that it's in the correct spot? So these are great to do at the end of a lesson. So after you've worked with Desmos, you can kind of go to your snapshots and you can show students um, exactly what you were thinking. So maybe you want to compare these three answers. You can say, how are these three um, solutions related? And you can discuss that with your students at the end. And so it's great when you're in a classroom because you can actually project that, but it's hard when you're doing online learning or e-learning. Um, so in that case, you could maybe share out a video or you could, you know, use these screen captures um, and have them fill in a couple uh, connecting questions at the end of the activity as a way to summarize your lesson. Um, so after they're done with the activity, you could share out a few um, questions for them to think about. Um, maybe you want to look at this one. I guess it, it only shows the parabola that I had, but let's say that person did have the parabola here then you can say, how can you adjust that vertex? Like how, how can we move it so it's in the correct location? So that's a great way to connect your students' answers and show them that even in an online environment, you're still interacting with them, you're still looking at their work. Okay, so that's all that I had for you today. Hopefully you learned some things about Desmos. It is a little challenging um, using the um, Desmos Activity Builder. So like I did with this, this um, activity, you can always look to Desmos for something that you're interested in at first and then adjust. Um, so maybe you have systems of equations. Here's my systems of equations one. Maybe you wanted to um, steal this. Well, you can say copy and edit. And so then if you copy and edit, You know, you can take what I had here or what someone else has created and you can you can edit it to make it, um, you know, more useful for your own class. So maybe you have someone that's not into goats and chickens, uh, but they're into horses and cows. I don't know, maybe you do a problem about horses and cows. So you can always adjust what's already there. As I've said in the last video, don't try to recreate the wheel. You can always use other teacher resources and build from there. All right, good luck with your creating and reach out to me if you have any additional questions. Thanks.